Hey, everyone. Okay, I was trying to breathe at the beginning of this. My name is Joshua T. Berglund, and today is February 1st at 1234 p.m. Central Time. Um, Want to get something out of the way? Um, I think I'm just going to start doing live video because it's a little bit easier. Um, I'm so I'm trying to figure out which one I want to use because there's a lot of multi stream and I just want to save as much time as I can. And even though these trimmers now have gone on for, is it seven days this way? Um, I want to read you something I just reminded me of. I'm going to open up. I'm going to start this by reading, I don't care what your religion is. I, I respect all of you. I've got love for you regardless. I love the Bible, but I also, I love other religious texts, but I, I, the Bible, the Bible, I'm reading the Bible. Where's the, that Ephesians verse that was so good? Where'd it go? There it is. Is it Ecclesiastes? Mm, this is it. It's Ecclesiastes. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For in the realm of the dead, where you are going, there is nothing work, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. Wait, that's not it. Put it in your hand. Ah, shoot. Where'd it go? It was about work. Was... <laughs> Where'd it go? Am I, was I hallucinating? Did I no, Ecclesiastes 9.10. Yeah, whatever your hand finds to do it, do with all your might. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 9.10. That's what it was. Uh, Ecclesiastes 9.10. Okay. <laughs> whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you're going that i'm going to read it again whatever your hand finds to do do it with your might for there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you're going so if you are questioning just for the record, I'm not assuming. I don't know because I have. I don't know what people think, and I try not to care. But this is what I love to do. I love to MC. I love broadcasting. It's all I've ever wanted to do. And here's the thing. When I started my path seven years ago, before getting off, kicked off platforms and stuff like that, I started right after getting out of the psych ward. Because that's where I was put in LA County when I was going to jail for the sixth time. And I was facing five years. I died in that cell and I found life. And it's been a wild journey since. But you see, when I gave my life to the Lord, that meant I had no other option but to pursue. What was put in my heart to do. Those of you who know my journey, who have been there, and some of you are new, because you know you didn't know me when I was broadcasting on Facebook and doing lives and stuff like that. <laughs> Before getting kicked off the platforms. Like this is a dream for me. And because of what it has enabled me to do and what it's given me access to and and how it's helped me be able to help other people and find purpose and why i'm passionate about teaching media not selling media 
I've only tried to sell services. I've only tried to sell my services when I was desperate for money, but the truth is I'm going to give it away because I want to help the people that don't have access to the world that I had access to. You see, I'm not famous. I've never been famous, but I've lived like a famous person most of my life just because of what I've been able to do and the people I've been able to meet and the things I've been able to learn. <laughs> I, I figured that because when God spared my life and gave me another chance and let me out of jail and I didn't go to prison, that my life belonged to him and I was going to serve using the gifts and talents that I have to bless other people and then take the things that I learned and share it with the audience, with people, because I realized pretty quick what media could do for people and how you can take your intellectual property, gifts and talents, and use media as a vehicle To, to provide value for the world, entertainment, joy, love, knowledge, and wisdom. To hopefully keep people, well, at least this is in my case, to keep people from making the same mistakes I made. Because here's the thing. Even when you're abused, even when you're abused, even when you're abused, even when you're molested, even when you're mentally unique, God has a plan for us. And he can use everything for good, including evil. But so the things that happened to me, yes, I could have turned my life around sooner. Yes, I could have quit running from God. Yes, I could have screamed out for help like I'm doing now when I was being abused. But no one believed me, one, when I did share. But nonetheless, I could have screamed louder. And I could have kept my voice from being silenced. And I could have said something and then maybe I would have got help sooner. <clears throat> but here's the thing. God's timing. I went through it, and then God found use for all of it, and that's what's in my book. That's in the content that I share and the passion I have to help other people that don't have a voice or people who are afraid to use their voice, because using your voice for truth in this world is not exactly applauded. It's not. It's not applauded. And it should be because we make it hard for other people to tell the truth because we call them faggots. Or we say they're stupid or retarded or fucking dumb. We treat people so terribly. No wonder people freaking live a lie no wonder people fake who they are on social media because they don't want to be treated like shit so for whatever reason i've gotten really comfortable talking about the stuff no one wants to talk about and it, And I wouldn't trade it for the world. All I ever wanted to be was a shock jock. A talk show host like Oprah. I loved Obi and Anthony. And that's what I wanted to do. I love talk shows. I love I love getting to just have deep conversations with people. I love it. But more importantly, I love the skills and the things that 
that that go with media and like how it's like if you just learn some basic things that you can bring stuff to life and now with the advancements of technology we have all of these opportunities and it's so exciting because even people who struggle with abuse and their ptsd and their asd and their did and their bpd and bipolar disorder and everything else and stutters even tourette's cerebral palsy any of that stuff you know and and so <sighs> It's so amazing what broadcasting can do because it gets your your truth out. And with your truth coming out, I don't know if I'm even making a point here, but truth will attract your tribe. You will if you stand in your truth. The people that you're trying to impress on social media that are so fickle and hard to please, well, guess what? When you start sharing the truth about you. When you start sharing who you are and where you are in that moment, truth will attract your tribe and you won't be alone. I thought when I told the my audience the first go around that I had HIV and two of the six times that I was in jail was for domestic violence. In fact, every time I've been in jail has been something to do with violence, except for the time I got arrested <laughs> with an escort. You think I would have known that she was an escort because I was one. God. Sorry, this is a... So here's the deal. I was talking about making it hard for people to tell the truth. There's nothing to be afraid of. By telling the truth I was an evangelist and talked about being bisexual or sexually fluid or all of my alter personalities with DID having different sexualities can you imagine being in a relationship with me <laughs> but yet Ruth attract my tribe anyway i've had a lot of people run away from me and want nothing to do with me and i'm it sucks but you know what without truth i would never have love because how lovable are you when you live a lie what is the person loving do you want fake love or do you want the real thing and I'm going to tell you something. I'm not the person that deserved love. But God got a hold of my heart and changed everything for me. And so while I don't know why I'm going through this, I do know that God will use it. And because of that verse, not just that verse, because of my passion and the vision that I have, I'm not going to stop doing what I love or speaking up or speaking out and advocating for people who need to be advocated for. I have advocates. Not only do I have people that love me, that are close to me in real life, I've never experienced so much love from digital avatars in my life. And even the real people. <laughs> that uh, so let me tell you, for those that are wondering about what happened yesterday when I went to the hospital, I think I was APS. Uh, my neck hurts so bad. <sighs> um, that uh, adult psychiatric services. Yeah. Okay. So it's really nice when you open the door, except it's really shady because there's like cops everywhere and there's a security guard at the entrance. They check your bag. Oops, I had gummies in there, but they didn't take them. Anyway, um, so got to go in and it was this really nice office. And so here's the only reason I went in is because my doctor's nurse so they were worried I was going to have a stroke. 
and they sent a car for me. You should read the email I sent them. I should post it sometime. <laughs> I told them what I think is going on. 5G and metals and I mean, I basically went into the whole Internet of Bodies thing and explained it in detail. So <laughs> needless to say, that's why I was a little concerned about <laughs> getting committed <laughs> to why I posted the video. <laughs> and uh, but so I go in and it's so nice. It's so nice. It's so nice. This this room. I mean, it's like you're going to give birth or something. That's so nice. And so when I go to the front desk, like they're supposed to be aware of me coming. They were supposed to be warned. Two things. Two things. One, that I'm doing this. And two, not to piss me off because or agitate me because it makes this worse. And if I switch, what's going to happen? Oh, and here's the crazy thing. I can't switch. In other words, I can't disassociate from this like I do like I do everything else. Like I can disassociate with a fart or loud sound. So I'm not disassociating. And is that what this energy is? Because I can't disassociate? I don't know. I mean, seriously, it sucks being a conspiracy theorist right now. But nonetheless, so they agitate the shit out of me. <laughs> they don't know who I am. They don't know why I'm there. I even give them my name and social. They don't know anything. And the doctor told me, or the doctor's nurse told me, that they were there. And they're not there. Or they didn't know I was coming. So, so crazy. So then there I'm getting agitated and I'm like hitting the walls and I can't, I can't stop. And the whole time I'm doing this, I'm saying, I am of sound mind. I know every bit of this is happening to me right now. I cannot disassociate from it and i wish i could which i may not wish i could because that crap may get a little wild oh especially what i would shift into probably but i'm not so is this god healing me is that what this is i don't know so i keep making it worse and i'm getting mad and then i try to leave and then they won't let me leave and they say i hear him saying make him a room he needs to go to the West Wing and the way they said it. I'm going to play you the messages. Where's Jessica's message? At? Here it is. Listen. Okay, this is crazy. Oh. So here's this. I'm in ASP. Forgot. I thought I was getting ready to walk in. It's not going well already, babe. They're sending me to the west of the room. I don't know what that means. Just in case I'm going to the west, and I don't know if that's the fucking room you've been or what. The west, just so you know. So I heard it. And then I got freaked out because you, if you know me, you know that I'm fighting. I'm fighting for people that are locked up in civil commitment. Those people, there's innocent people being locked up and tortured. And there's guilty people there too, but there's people that are innocent and they need help. So I'm thinking that they're going to civilly commit me for something. Because one, it looks like I'm jerking off and I'm not. So i finally give in and i just said go take me i want to get better because they kept saying do you want to get better do you want this to stop and i'm like yes so then i go back to the room and then they tell me so do you know what it means to be checked in like are you committing me well yeah it's kind of like that but here's what they tell me it's kind of like being committed. So I go in this room and they go, it's not as nice as a hospital. Well, 
it looked just like prison, just like LA County, to be honest. Except the it's they were bars. It was a steel door, but I could walk around. And they took me in that room in this bed, small bed, like bed right in the middle it looked like when sarah connor got strapped to the bed in the loony bin that thing that's exactly what it looked like but i was able to walk around still so needless to say i'm looking at the staff everyone's happy and smiling and i'm going well maybe this isn't a bad place maybe this isn't a bad place at all Maybe this is, I'll be okay, and I'm really going to get help, and maybe doctors actually care. Okay? So I started paying attention to everybody else on top of the medication that they gave me. Pay attention. I was looking at their eyes. And I know that I didn't know why they were there, but I was looking. So... Anyway, long story short, I don't know how much longer ever, but they're, the only thing on TV was Lucifer. And I'm not being like ironic or even trying to be funny. It was Lucifer. And literally the episode I saw was when the blonde girlfriend found out that he, I'm not insane. See, I can remember this. I remember more. I never remember anything, by the way. I switch all the time and don't remember shit. And I remember everything. So the blonde lady... Um, she's actually a comedian. She was on Saturday Night Live. She's great. I actually like her a lot. She finds out that the dude's actually Lucifer, the devil, and but you know she already likes him. Never this guy's trying to blow his cover, and she's like, "Oh, I see him who 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 he really is. I see him for who he really is." And so they were making they were humanizing Satan. That was kind of really ironic that i was in that facility and if you've ever seen the museum psychiatry of death then you know it's gonna make you a conspiracy theorist on that alone so finally meet the doctor and they tell me i can't absolutely cannot leave until i see the doctor so i'm paranoid that i'm not going to see the doctor so i watched two episodes of lucifer and then that so that was what an hour or two hours i don't know i have no idea how long each episode is anyway they took everything from me, phone, wallet, key, everything. I don't have keys. Why I say keys? I don't carry keys. Um, well, gym key. Anyway, um, so I finally talked to the doctor, and the doctor simply said, you know, I was asking me what was going on, and I was trying to explain that it's happened, and I'm watching because he's not looking at me. He's looking at his pad. So, you know, they take notes. So I'm watching this pad the whole time. I'm looking at him, looking at the pad as I'm talking, looking up and down, seeing what he's doing. And when he starts to make pen notes, I'm like, okay, so now he's writing. What's he writing? But he's not writing much. Still talking to him. And he's looking down at his pad, looking like he's writing. So I stood up. And said, I'm not crazy. I'm of sound mind. I know everything that's happening as I'm looking down at his pad. And he was just doodling. He wasn't listening to me. I said, I'm of sound mind. And I was sound mind when I came in here. I came in on my own because they said they could make this stop. And that's the only reason I came here. I am of sound mind. And I was like getting louder. And then I have a loud voice projection, if you haven't figured that out yet. So... I told him, uh, I told him that I was of sound mind and I because I'm of sound mind. So I left. And they let me out. I'm very fortunate because I was nervous. But I do want to say one kind of neat thing that happened, and I would be remiss if I didn't share this, because I'm not saying that they were going to commit me or do anything bad. What I am saying is there was a really sweet nurse, because I was very paranoid 
about being civilly committed for some reason or just being committed against my will. And uh, it didn't happen. Thank God, praise God. But it was ironic that I was sitting there thinking that before my book, The Devil Inside Me, I did go to the psych ward, but it wasn't it. It was not because I was crazy at that time, even though I was really crazy at that time. It wasn't for that reason. It was talking about DID. That that the whole book is about DID. It just sounds like demons. So I was like laughing, kind of. I'm like, well, I guess I have a different sequel than I thought I did because I'm back in the psych ward, surrounded by demons. Ugh. Anyway. But the nurse said to me, you need, when you, when you talk about Jessica, you calm down. And she said, will you tell me about you and Jessica, who's Miss Jess VR on Twitter X? Oh, I can't believe I just did a plug, but whatever. That's who she is. And I shouldn't plug Genostim, too, while I'm at it. Be like, hey, by the way, um, <laughs> I don't want anyone's handouts or money, or <laughs> but go buy Genostim. <laughs> G-E-N-O-S-T-I-M.com. Use promo code MAYOR to save 20% on your risk-free order. <laughs> That doesn't sound right, but it's true. It's an amazing product, and it just the, the trimmers started before Genostem. By the way, <clears throat> Genostem. It's made all my blood work great. Anyway, I'm not talking about them right now. I love them, but I'm not talking about them. They said, "Talk about Jessica. Tell us how you met." And she calm me down until I started talking about the work Jessica and I do together. <laughs> <laughs> and when I started talking about the prisoners and the mentorship stuff I do, I still picked up and got anxious. But when I talk about Jessica, um, things calmed down a little bit. So I got to tell my love story with Jessica. And it's awesome. If you know Jessica, you know how special she is. And she's been amazing for me. She is launching an educational platform in the metaverse, in VR, that's revolutionary. She takes care of two kids that are amazing, that have ASD. Um, and then she takes care of me. She is what everyone thought Mother Teresa was. <laughs> She's a gift from God. And um, I'm grateful for her because I have love. And I have two little girls that love me. And I have very awesome relationships with them. And I only wish that I had Jessica in my life before I was a deadbeat dad. And before I gave up my twins for adoption because I was... a Kim sex addict and couldn't stop. I think about how I had times to turn my life around and I just never thought I could because I just wanted to die so much. I just wanted to die and escape from my pain. And it's amazing what God can do to someone's heart and in their life and how they can give purpose or God, how God can give purpose to every situation, every situation. Mm -mm. You know, my heart, even with the wicked stuff that I've experienced and even the stuff that I've done and even being imperfect now, 
the fact that I have joy in my heart is only because of God. And um, I am I d I'm going to keep broadcasting and I'm going to try to do a better job on these and I think I'm just going to start doing live so I can save some steps and not edit. I'm not a great editor anyway. I just kind of enjoy doing, you know, what I'm able to. But I'm going to try to just give short updates and share positive things, talk about positive things. But before that, I mean it sincerely when I ask you to please look up my civil commitment videos on YouTube or my website under civil justice because there's people that need your prayers more than me and I need your prayers but there's people that need it more than me and I want to encourage you that if you know that God has a plan for your life that God has a purpose if you know and you realize that God has a purpose and you're trying to pursue it but you think that you don't have the money you think you can't quit your job or whatever the reason is well let me tell you something from experience God's plan for you is bigger than anyone in your life. And yes, the people in your life are part of your plan. The purpose of what you were created for comes first because that's how you honor God the most. So I'm going to read this verse again. Make of it what you will. Oh, crap, it disappeared. <sighs> Ecclesiastes. Oh, no, 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 no. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. My hands are messed up right now. They're not really messed up because they feel really strong. My brain's right. And I don't take the Bible literally anyway. So my brain is still functioning and my heart is still functioning. So I may be not able to do things the way I want to do them, but that's okay. I can still do the things that God's put on my heart to do, and I'm not going to stop. <laughs> I'll be smarter, but I'm not going to stop pursuing what God created me to do. And you shouldn't either, no matter what. And if you're using an excuses and you and money is your excuse you need to talk to me about that i haven't had a job in eight years as much as i want one sometimes because i get scared that god's not gonna provide for me and even though i struggle with getting a job because of my mental uniqueness God has always shown up for me and he will continue to and that's what God does when you do what God created you to do and I believe it with all my heart it doesn't mean life will be easy but what is most important to you money or love money or joy and look i get it money is awesome <laughs> i know what it's like to have a lot of money i wouldn't trade it for love the love of god the love of my family i love of my kids the love of the people that i i am blessed to call a friend you don't know 
how much time you have to do the things that you want to do. So just freaking find a way and do them. And if I can be of any help to you, my brain works and I'm not crazy. So my email is joshua at joshua t berglund.com. My website is www.joshua t berglund.com. I'm happy to help because I'm not going to stop doing what I love just because I can't do some of the other things that I want to do. I don't necessarily think about loving moving my arms or not, but I do still have the ability to help people and I'm going to, but I can't do the work for you, but I'll teach you. God bless you. Thank you. Okay.